I went to Synthesize Festival at the Cambridge Centre for Computing History, all about celebrating links between synthesizers and computing. I mean, did you know that the Prophet 5 has the same processor as a ZX Spectrum? And I took this Uniselector sequencer along with some other cool stuff, like this paper tape reader. And one cool thing you can do when you run tape through this is trigger drums with it. But the problem was I didn't have any drums. So what we're gonna do here is build some. Specifically we're gonna build the twin T drums published by look mum no computer uh, from a old magazine. There's links to his video and the schematic and stuff down below. This is the same kind of circuit that was in the CR78 drum machine and lots of other good sounding stuff. And handily my friend Jack from Beep Boop Electronics Workshop, who makes awesome synthesizer modules. And there's actually an interview with Jack talking about his approach to making synths on this channel. He gave me this really cool panel, but it's not just a Eurac panel. You can actually solder to it and make a circuit on the panel. So we're gonna make the drums on this. Now this isn't gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial for everything in this build, but I just wanna take you through the journey because when you're doing a project like this, there can be loads of barriers to overcome and you can see how I overcome them and maybe take some inspiration from that. I mean, for instance, looking at this schematic here, where do you start? You just got a blank panel here. Where do you start? It's quite overwhelming, isn't it? So just looking at the components, we've got eight op amps in all. So that's two TL074s, they're quad op amps, four in each package. And there's also another integrated circuit, a AND gate, and four of the op amps need to be near the AND gate. So we'll put those two integrated circuits next to each other. And the other big components are the jacks. There's six inputs and six outputs. I'm thinking maybe inputs on the left side, outputs on the right side. That seems to make sense. And then the integrated circuits down the middle. So that's a good place to start. And then we can work out from there. Those trigger inputs have also got an LED, so that'll go next to the jack. And you're gonna want a label on there. I don't know if there's gonna be enough space to put labels on. What I would use are these uh, printed labels. Like these, but that's gonna take up a lot of space. So, hmm, we may need to get creative with that. We shall see. Very simple to overthink these things. In a project like this that doesn't need to be perfect, just best to crack on. Let's just start laying stuff out. Okay, well after a bit of playing about, it seems to work itself out quite nicely to have three spaces in between each with this at the bottom and this right at the top. This suggests in itself to me now, so I think that's what we're gonna go for. And I moved them in a little bit, uh, just looks a bit better to my eye. No right or wrong answers at all really. That leaves a little bit of room down the side for the LEDs. Feeling good about my decisions so far, so I'm just gonna commit and solder them in and we'll keep on, keep on moving. And you know, we're gonna have to deal with issues as we go along they will come up but that is the price of uh, working this way but it's the only way you get stuff done sometimes cool we're gonna do the ICs next we're just looking at this all the time and figuring out new problems uh, don't have enough of these trimmers but I can simplify it I think by combining this trimmer here with this resistor, just put in a series resistor here, the right amount. I'm not sure what that right amount is going to be exactly. We're going to just build it and then uh, have a fiddle around and figure it out. And now let's figure out the ICs. We're using these uh, old RCA 4011s. Uh, it's the old type of logic gate because it doesn't have the internal buffers, uh, so it doesn't mute the decay, which is good. And together with the TLO 74s, uh, which are also 14 pin ICs, so we just need need three 14 pin IC sockets. You could just solder it straight on there, but you know, uh, chances are <laughs> we might break something. So it's good to have them in sockets so you can just swap them out if you blow them. Uh, and we're gonna also need a power header, obviously, um, to our Eurac power case. And I'm gonna put that at the bottom. Good trick with these, because they come in a big long row, is to just grab it with pliers and twist it off. Don't snap it, twist it. It will come much nicer. And the power pin header is going to go on the bottom of the board, obviously. 
you see that soldered in right at the bottom so we get maximum space and uh, I'm going to bridge these ground pins later uh, just so that the return current is going to go through all of the wires on our ribbon cable. Right, cool. And I'm tidying away all the components that we're not going to need again uh, just so the desk remains clear and the by uh, head remains a bit clearer. Decided to put the ICs on the front because I think it's going to look cool to have the circuitry on the front of the panel. All these little choices, they all add up in the end to the finished product and you're going to make unique choices because of your taste and that's what makes your unique things that you make. So just trust your instinct because that's all you got at the end of the day. I have a load of uh, cheat sheets, I call them, just simple things that uh, you need to remember, like the pinouts on your racks, and common values for different E series of resistors and stuff. I keep them all in a folder. And because you use the TLO74 so much, I should remember <laughs> what the pinout is, but I never do. But you see that pin 4 is the positive rail, and pin 11 is the negative rail. So on our board, you want to take the positive from this side of the header here and the negative from this side so that we can link them up on the right sides. Did some circuit protection and some power supply filtering and number one rule of Eurac modular is red stripe down so put a little red label here for the minus 12 volts to go to. Got my bag of coloured wire out now, uh, single core stuff and because we're going to be needing that shortly. And we also need a 7805 uh, voltage regulator, 5 volt regulator. And the pinout for this one is input, ground, output. If you ever want to know the pinout of an integrated circuit, you can look it in its data sheet or just Google image search it and it will come up with a diagram. But don't always trust it. Make sure that it matches at least a couple of the pictures because people do get it wrong. And instead of bridging all these pads across, if you want a line connected with just solder, you can just use a piece of bare wire instead, which keeps things a bit tidier uh, and less chance of things accidentally touching and shorting. Right, so that's all the power hooked up. Used all different colour cables just so it's a bit easier to troubleshoot later. And I kept them in close to the sockets just so you've got maximum space out here. As I'm going, I'm just crossing them off the schematic so I know what I've done already. I've decided that I'm going to put a TLO74 op amp at the top and that's going to be these four across here and these circuits are pretty much identical these four uh, drum voices and then there is here one two three four that is the logic gate which is going to be in this IC socket next to it so we're going to have a bit extra space down here because it's just literally wires going to the uh, logic I see there's no components really around it and then there's a whole thing here for the uh, snare uh, the noise circuit and a little mixer here and that's gonna all go around this IC socket down here. So really for the rest of the time laying this out I'm just looking for the simplest option possible. So for example these uh, LEDs that come off of these input uh, jacks it's just an LED and a resistor and then to ground. So the uh, input pin, the tip is on this side of the jack so have the LED coming out, a resistor and then connecting to the ground of the actual jack as well so just coming around like a loop that's the simplest way to do that and lay it out and you're just looking for little clues of how to do things best I already got a ground pin there so let's loop it around to the ground pin you see what I mean and I'm going to use the actual legs of the LED to connect to the pin of the jack by bending it over and then soldering it on decided that I'm gonna uh, build it in stages because if you build the whole thing and then it doesn't work much harder to troubleshoot it so I'm gonna build just one drum voice at a time and then check that they're working as we go along and then uh, that'll be much easier to fix things if they're gonna go wrong you can trace it now we're at the stage where we can turn it on and try and get the kick drum working before I did this before I put the ICs in I did a power test checked that the power was coming 
uh, correctly to the right pins on the ICs, just so there's no chance of blowing the ICs um, before we test it. That was all good. Uh, I did make one mistake, didn't have a ground connection, so I caught that. Yeah, another couple little things that I needed to trace, because I have I have already tested this, and I did a little bit of experimentation with, do you remember there was the top, we didn't have enough trimmers, um, so I've substituted, I, I tested two few different things. It sounded best with a 10K resistor in series um, instead of the 150 and this trimmer. So it just pops that in, that's there, and uh, everything seems to be working. Let's turn it on. If we put a trigger in from the case, lights up, makes a sound. Kind of hearing that out of the mix bus now. That's all of the drums mixed together, and you can hear it individually. Um, and then this just changes the decay. But yeah, plenty of good bass drum sounds within that range there. Right, on to the next drum voice. Now that I've figured it out for one, I can just copy this layout pretty much onto the next one uh, so we don't have to figure it all out again. The high tom is done. Uh, worked first time, fantastic. Um, I'm on a roll now because uh, most of the decision making, where to place components and stuff is already done. I could just copy it over. And I swapped over the leads of the trimmers because they were the wrong way around. Uh, so now if I turn this up, there's a K will go up. Those are the sounds out of that, that'd be great. We now have the high tom. Uh, had a bit of trouble with it. For some reason, the uh, 33 NF capacitor was just too small. I had to swap it out for a 47. It was um, triggering when the signal from my oscillator goes off as well so uh don't know why I, I mean um i'm not using proper triggers this is more like a gate so you know it's not exactly what you should be sending to it but um this is much better now then i can send uh signals from my logic gates to this without having to do a gate to trigger converter we skipped ahead a bit now because it was pretty much the same process going forward and it's actually done, it's finished and it's looking pretty awesome I think isn't it? So let me first show you all of the drum voices. Here's the clave. And the snare. Nice. And the snare actually is one of the toms mixed in with some noise and you can trigger the noise on its own and this one. And you've got individual outs of the top five drums and then a mix out of all of them. And I did find room for these labels. So let's get an actual drum beat going. So all in all, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, there was some mistakes I'll let you in on. Uh, so the power header around the back, I put that too far down. It turns out that the rails on my Eurorack case are a little bit too big and it's bumping up against the ribbon cable. Uh, so that was a bit of an oversight, but we can get around that pretty easy. I'll just put some standoffs on here and it can stand out from the case a little bit, which will probably look quite cool. So my mistake was assuming that my rails would fit within this gap here. As uh, someone told me a long time ago, don't assume anything. And that's very good advice. It would have taken two seconds to move that over to the case and actually check it out. So test all of your hypotheses. But any of the other mistakes that I've made with it that I've had to correct as we go along the way, see there's a couple of jumper cables and an extra diode soldered on the back. Well, I left myself room for mistakes, which is a really good thing to get in the habit of doing. You're gonna make mistakes and that's fine. As long as you plan for that, that might take the form of buying an extra component just so if you break one, you've got a spare. And that's linked in with the idea that you should always be thinking ahead. When I decided to space the jacks and the ICs, I was 
thinking ahead, trying to make as much room as possible for the circuitry, because I didn't know exactly how it was going to go. I just tried to leave myself the most wiggle room possible. All creative pursuits, it basically boils down to your ability to make decisions. I think designing circuitry is exactly like songwriting. It's just a million decisions that you have to make, tiny decisions that add up to the final product. As you get more experience and do more stuff, you'll be more informed to make those little decisions and things will go smoother and easier. So if you're weighing up a load of different options, the one with the least compromises normally the right one. Maybe this is a bit airy-fairy, but I think of it like an ice sculpture. So you've got a big old block of ice and you're trying to figure out where the sculpture is inside it. Uh, you just take one little chip at a time and that will inform your next move. And eventually you chip a chip away and you're left with something that looks all right. So I would say the number one skill that you need to do anything creative is just to be decisive. Like I sometimes get messages from people asking me whether certain projects are like possible for them to do and stuff. And you know, you tell me like, try it and find out. You don't need my permission or anybody else's permission to go ahead and try something. And don't be afraid of doing things different from other people. That's what makes things unique to you. And I'll leave you with a big top tip. If you're unsure, go for symmetry. Because if things have a repeated pattern, if they follow a theme and they look a bit symmetrical, then it makes it look like it was intentional. It makes it look like you know what you're doing. So I hope that was useful for you in some way to do in your own projects. Take it away. Mm -hmm.